Welcome Spartans to the Podcast Evolved Book Club. I'm your host Aaron and with me today is Krista. Yay! And David. Hello everybody. And this episode we're talking about human weakness. One of the stories from Halo Evolutions. You might remember those uh, short story collections from quite a few years ago. 2009? They were published? Yep, 2009. 2010 for Ah. Volume 2. There's two versions of it, yes, because if yeah. you got the original, it was one book, or if you're like me and you got them later, you got them as two volumes with a few extra stories, so they're quite good and worth getting, and this story's written by none other than Karen Travis, author of the Kilo 5 trilogy. I totally forgot about this. We like her. This is like her introduction to the franchise. Yeah, when I was putting the script together, I was like, oh... I did not know she did this book. It's very good. She does a lot of good, like, character building stuff, which I like. She writes the Gears of War books as well, which is saying a lot that she managed to infuse, like, proper character depth. Personality into those. (laughs) Yes, like, personality and emotion. Like, you you read the books and you feel sad and you understand stuff, and it's quite cool. They have feelings? I thought they were just pure testosterone in that No, no, they have feelings and testosterone. And, wow, I didn't know you could have both. That's a lot. <laughs> she does a really good job of it, so th- this is her first sort of story in the Halo universe, and this uh, essentially covers Cortana's time between the end of Halo 2 and her rescue at the end of Halo 3. Great time. 10 out of 10. This, like, setting totally caught me off guard when I was reading this book. It's like I was not prepared. Like, I didn't really know what was in Evolutions when I was reading it. And when I read this, I was like, this is awesome. I always wanted to know what happened. So, like, and then the actual story of it is just, like, so way more, like, in-depth and way more hardcore than I was expecting, like, at all. Oh, yeah, really it's it's really good. She ties it in really well. They have sections and lines here that l- match up with the, like, Cortana memory things that happened to Chief in Halo 3. Well, it literally goes from the ending of Halo to the legendary ending to the beginning, or not the beginning, but... The Cortana level in Halo 3. Oh, that's what I mean. Like, there, there's certain quotes here where there's lines from the Gravemind that match up word for word with the, uh, you know, like the loading bits in Halo 3 when you're like, yeah, when, when you get talking. like shimmery Cortana or you get shimmery Gravemind and stuff. So, like, they line them all up and pay good attention to that, which I really appreciate. Yeah. Like, when I was first reading Evolutions, I actually, um, I started with volume one and went to volume two like a normal person, but I had actually gone through and, like, looked at what each of the stories were about, which was a bad idea because I found this one, Human Weakness, and I was too stubborn to just skip to that one, so I had to read through every other story to get there, and it was really frustrating. I'm like, I just want to learn what happened. Can't skip, Krista. That's against the rules. I know, it is. So I didn't. You can skip when it's the short stories because they never tie into each other. That's the beauty of it. But they all tie into Halo, Aaron. They do, but you can read this first and then go back and read the others. It's great like that. That is barbaric, Aaron. Why would you do that? So I think fun fact just to drop in here while we're talking about this because I, for the book club decided to go back and listen to the audiobook version so fun fact if you're listening to the audiobook it's voiced by jen taylor awesome which is amazing yeah she does a very good job of it i'm sure i mentioned it on the show before but they get several different people to do voices who does Gravemind? oh no um she does all the voices in this but i mean in uh, palace hotels another story in this they get steve downs to voice it they get midnight in the heart of midlothian's frank o'connor that's so, cool. like, they get a few different people to guest in and do stuff. 
So it's not just the same person reading the, in all of the stories in the book. No, I, f- I forget the narrator's name that does the others, but he does several of the stories and then any like this that deal with one specific person. So in this case, then they get Jen Taylor to do the whole lot. It's quite cool. And like it really helps settle it in that this is the character. It's immersive. Yes, immersive. That's the word I was looking for, Krista. Well, that's perfect because you think like Cortana's voice is so identifiable. That of course, you'd want Jen Taylor as the voice, you know? Oh yeah, totally. Like it's one of those things where you can't sort of you can't take your mind away from it the same way if you like later you have a, if we had another story about chief and it's narrated by a different author or a, a different narrator you just like in your head you go that's not chief <laughs> it's a sham uh, the same with the game of thrones books actually since i did the game of thrones audiobooks and watched the tv show the two don't match up oh yeah it niggles at me all the time like the Tyrion in the books and the Tyrion on the tv show are kind of different Dinklebot. i know but that's what i mean but like the the Tyrion you have in the novels is a bit more of a weirdo and a bit less like suave as peter dinklage <laughs> you can't take the suave away from peter dinklage but that's enough about <laughs> game of thrones do you want to run through the synopsis for this just quickly and then we can chat about things we like definitely do we want to go through the entire synopsis Nah, just a very quick kind of run through. What's the story about, Krista? What what happens? Well, if you recall, at the end of Halo 2, Master Chief leaves Cortana in high charity with Gravemind. So this kind of just bridges the gap between um, Halo 2 and 3 and just what Cortana experiences with the Gravemind. Because as we learn throughout this, Gravemind doesn't just absorb organic material. He can also absorb computers. So he essentially tries to absorb her, and so it's basically it's basically a Cortana torture scene. But the differences between AIs and humans, AIs have are tortured in different ways than humans can be. AIs are literally just tortured with data, which was really interesting. I think that's one of the biggest or the strongest points in this is that it's kind of the difference between AIs and humans, which I've always found fascinating, which is why this is one of my favorites in uh, the evolutions. I love it. Anything to add? That's pretty much it. I mean, like I said, I mean, I was not ready for like a torture scene book, which is essentially what this is. But like, there's some very important kind of things that happen in this story that I don't think people know a lot about. And like that really inform the changes between Cortana that we see in Halo 4. And that um, pretty much comes to a conclusion in, in Halo 5, really, you know, with her turning from John. But, like, she does get corrupted, essentially. And I love, like, the, the comment that they've addressed, which I don't think they've ever mentioned anywhere else before, about the fact that all the information that she, she absorbed from Alpha Halo is pretty much what caused her to go rampant. Because she had just too much data at once when she first integrated with the first Halo. I thought, like, that was just... They've never really addressed that before or since. That, like, she really took on a massive amount of information at once that all came to her from when she connected to Alpha Alpha Halo. Well, and also the Forerunner AIs were able to handle a lot more data than the the human AIs. So, I mean, what rampancy is, if you don't know exactly what rampancy is, it's where an AI has accumulated way too much knowledge and basically just drowns in in their knowledge. And it's also, Rampancy is also an AI trying to become more human as well, I feel. I don't know if it's more human. It's not something they try to do. I think they des- like they describe it in this book as, a, I think there's, she talks about a conversation she had with Halsey and they kind of describe it as like the AI form of dementia. Yeah. But like, that's they say, it's, she's going to have so much knowledge and she's going to focus more and more effort into like preserving the knowledge that eventually she just gets lost in it. And then the thing with this story, and I've, gone over the story a couple of times and i'm not entirely sure is the rampancy that cortana experiences in this story real or a trick of what grave mind is it a trick of the grave mind because it when they talk about this if you remember back in the flood when they have the uh, captain keys is being assimilated by the flood the proto Grave yeah, mind. the way the grave mind wor- or the flood worked there was it would force him to recall a memory and then strip that memory from him because he was biological so he hung on to the very last memory he had which was the access codes for the pillar of autumn but he kept losing memories of like he'd remember something about uh, miranda and then it would be stripped away from him he'd remember training to be stripped away from him that was really hard to watch as well that terminal oh my god yeah like as you listen to it you see how he how the grave mind works with the human but then he can't do that with cortana but what he can do is he can force Cortana to recall things and then essentially 
track it through the system because the way he tortures her she describes it in the story is he spreads out through high charity and takes over then he's interfaced with all the mainframes throughout the system and unlike i think she says in the story that uh, had this been an ai attacking her she would be able to see where it was going to attack what it was going to do but she can't tell where the grave mine's going to attack her from because he's coming from outside the system and he's everywhere well, he's also at once. organic right yeah he seems to be tapped into the mainframe through his tentacles. It kind of—I imagine it's something similar to how the the engineers do it. He's like interfaced with it, but he's not in the system, so she can never tell what he's going to do next. But it seems to be that every time he forces her to recall something, he can track the data through her system. Like he's—he's well, he's basically trying to get the information for Earth's defenses, but. He knows where it is and he knows it's that that it's encrypted, but he can't get the information himself. He seems to be trying to make Cortana go crazy so she'll tell him the information. Well, I think what he wanted to do is her to just give up and completely interface with him because he would just absorb all that knowledge. Yeah, I got that impression too, that he was just looking to absorb her. And also with the rampancy thing, I feel like Gravemind has found so many AIs that he was actually like basically forcing Cortana to feel maybe another or kind of organically making up like, making her think she's going rampant, but she really isn't because he knows... I mean, Gravemind is literally just... He knows all the different kinds of deaths they are, and maybe he was just trying to make Cortana feel rampant. But um, as you... If you can remember at the very end of this story, when Cortana interfaces with Chief, Chief actually winces because or Cortana's so broken when she interfaces with him. Is that in the game? I don't remember that. No, that's in the end of the thing. Is it? There's going to be some page flips. Yeah, the... the- They don't actually mention that in the game, it's just in the story. John transferred her to his suit. She could have sworn that she felt him wince as they interfaced that told her more eloquently than any diagnostic that there was something irreparably wrong with her. Oh. That's at the very end. So it's like even John can tell that she's kind of broken at that point. It just something is different. The way he tortures her, it's something I never thought about before. That the start, like at the start of the story, Cortana's her usual cocky self and is like, "Yeah, we're we're gonna be here for a while." And she like she gives him shit a couple of times about how he talks in riddles. poetry and riddles and all the rest of it. But then as the story goes on, she like really starts to become unhinged. But the way he does it is he dangles information in front of her because, as he says to her. The only thing an AI wants is information. And like there's nothing else. They, at the end of the day they don't really care about people or the rest of it. It's information and he has something that she like cannot resist. And that's new information. Because he like teases her with one of them's like memories of being on a planet. The smells of the grass and the rest of it. Like Cortana knows all of this is someone else's memories. But it's all completely alien to her. And she can't help but like absorb it. And she tries to resist it for a while, but she describes it as the equivalent of a human like trying not to breathe. And you can only hold your breath for four, for so long before you have to absorb it. And actually, I thought that was a good detail. She talks about how like eventually in humans, what was it oxidation like kills them? Like eventually, oxygen's the thing that destroys you as a as yeah, an organic life form. And like information is eventually like it's her oxygen. It's the thing that will kill her. And she can't resist it, but every time she absorbs a bit of it, the the grave mind gets a bit further into her system. As he kind of like he rides the information into her, and he's slowly like creeping through her files and her systems. And like it even talks about he makes Cortana realize that she views herself as a human and not an AI. It's like the opposite of BB because BB yeah. view, views himself well, BB, as information. BB is so well. The thing about BB is that he's so worried about becoming about mixing himself up with humans that he tries his hardest to keep himself you know yeah. just pure information and like they talk about this with Cortana's like her sense of self even though she knows she's not the hologram on the pedestal and she's the information in the mainframes she can't help but see herself as the hologram so when the grave mind attacks her he like slaps her on the face but she feels the slap and she talks about how like she feels him pull her hair even though she knows her hair is not real but it is who she is in a way. Yeah, it's who she perceives herself as. Which is, it's interesting because um, it is called human, this whole story is called human weakness. And I mean, throughout this, Gravemind is making her feel more and more human, giving her human experiences. Like she smells stuff for the first time, feels stuff for the first time, feels an organic death for the first time. And it just, hel- it just gets me wondering, maybe 
maybe this experience was why Cortana was so much more humanized in Halo 4. That's a great idea. I never even figured that. Yeah, because she was way more, but we knew that was also because of the character. But it's interesting that she could have changed so much because of those um, experiences. Or even the torturing. not thinking about Halo 4, like thinking about Halo 5, you can kind of see the seeds of where an idea came from for Cortana turning into who she is. And like, oh, what do they call themselves? Why have I completely blanked on the name? The created? The created, like you can see this, like the, the beginning seeds of it, because they talk about the grave mind's first interrogating her. He says that, oh, you're, you're like, you're not even a being in your own right. You're like an echo. I forget the phrase he uses. I think he describes it as like an echo of algorithms of a real person. Well, that's well, that's accurate considering how Cortana was made. Yeah, and he, he like he describes just like not a person in her own right, and that. And then as it goes on, he slowly sort of like reveals to her that actually she is basically just a person and a human. Well, that's all we are. But it's kind of kind of it breaks it down to we're all just electrical impulses in our brains, really. If we're ignoring the existence of a soul or well and he also you know? he also teases her about well why would they make you when you had such a short lifespan why would they torture you like that why would they make you up to die in such a horrible way which is why she which is why she's so obsessed in um halo 5 with bringing Curing immortality rampancy. yeah like you, you see like seeds of it like creeping along which goes back to the thing of you can't help but feel that at some point down the line it might reveal that the grave mind still has a hand in the cortana of halo 5 you can't help but see things in this story and then look at halo 5 and go these seem suspiciously well i mean and also the domain isn't supposed to be around anymore and somehow cortana accessed it there's a comic that you're missing krista that's in tales of space that tells about cortana's how she gets access to the domain Oh, okay. And even with the back to the domain being around, there's a story in Fractures that deals with how the domain is still a thing after the firing of the Halos. Which one is that? No, I'm totally blanking on that. Um. Oh, I forget the name of the story. It's uh. It deals with like the immediate aftermath when the forerunners go back, venture back into the galaxy. Oh, I do remember that when they go back to um. And they go back to the capital city and yeah. do a few things and. Yeah. So like I remember it, that. They haven't really explained how... You'd love it, Krista. It's pretty much like a sequel to um, Greg Bear's novels. Yeah. Oh, it, ha- it has returning that. characters and stuff, so and they kind of go away and do things. So it's, it's kind of interesting. Like, after the fall of the Forerunners, like, those who left behind what they do, how they kind of plant the seeds for the future kind of thing. And that's it. Like, you can see, like, the things they talk about in the Domain and Cortana and Halo 5, and you can see, like, inklings of it in this story, I think, which I find super interesting like you see little hints of where Cortana's unhinged nature comes from in Halo 5 and things she talks about and the way she talks about seem sort of reminiscent of things the grave mind tortured her about during this whole encounter and this is also very similar to the um to medicant bias in grave mind as well that's pretty yeah that's the, what I got it's pretty much the same process I mean that was the first time we saw the inorganic corrupt and deal with the organic. I, I didn't think it was an actual, let's say, for lack of a better term, physical kind of corruption. I thought he just corrupted them with like logic in terms of like he used like external sources to corrupt their way of thinking to thinking to joining his side. I didn't think he was direct. He did mention it in the story that I think he said that he's the only AI that gave himself over willingly. The others were just corrupted and absorbed because he, there's, there's like a quote or a line, it's something like on his deathbed, he freely gave himself over to us, one of your ancestors. So I think like... Was he, you think he's referring to Medigan Bias? Yeah, I think Medigan Bias is the only AI that ever turned sides. The others, I think, were just... Cortana eventually would have been driven mad and would have been absorbed by him and her information. I, I don't think like there was... It wasn't necessarily an attempt to corrupt Cortana into becoming like a minion of the grave mind. Whereas I think Medigan Bias just happened to give himself over in the end. Well- I'm sure when Gravemind realized that Chief was coming for Cortana and he couldn't stop him, he could have planted some kind of seed or something to make Cortana become a little more crazy. I mean, that's not a um, against the realm of possibility. I, I think at that stage, maybe just the damage was done and then there's no getting back from that. Like, it's the equivalent of, like, brutal physical damage to any of us. You can only heal yourself so much. And I think whatever he just did to Cortana at the time was enough to just bring things closer to the end for her. Yeah. And then I, I could imagine, like, and it's her version of a near-death experience. So I wonder if, like, after that, 
and as she got towards the end like it just spurred her on a bit but I still think when you go through this story I can't help but feel like there's little hints that the grave mind has more to do with later stuff down the line well and also this happened chief gets cortana back she's broken they beat the grave mind and then she's floating in space alone for four years that's very true yeah i mean what information was she absorbing during that four years i'm sure she powered down somewhat but she still was alone even on the start of like forward on the dawn they sort of go through a bit of it like she processed through I think like she spent some of her time processing through the information from the Halo because I got the f- when she got the information from the first Halo, I don't think she worked her way through all of it because in the, I think it's in First Strike when she's with John and they're on the Covenant ship, as she's starting to like forget stuff, and she's not thinking clearly. She locks the Halo information off in part of her archives, and she stops actively looking through it. Because she's realised she's become like bloated and slow. But she still, I think she's like put the equivalent of like put it on the thumb drive in herself. But she wasn't like actively going through the info. So I got the feeling like that's what happened then down the line was she spent her time studying through the Halo information. While she had nothing else to do. Yeah, that much information would slow down her processes, which is probably why she did that. It's been so long since I read First Strike. (laughs) Yeah, and the other thing to go with that is like she had this traumatic event. And then she just drifted through space and like I'm sure she could have done with a, the AI equivalent of a counsellor. To, to go through something like this and then be on your own for four years would be traumatic. a lot to take in. Yeah, like it would be severely traumatic so I can't, like I can see how all that would have added up. And created the crazy lady Halo 5. <laughs> yeah. Because man, she is crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah i still yeah. i still have my theories on that but i'll not go into that here again overall what do we think of this story i honestly think it's completely well written it bridges the gap between halo 2 and halo 3 expertly uh it makes you understand the character a bit more and it's completely 100 percent worth reading i agree i think it's underrated i don't think it's talked about enough i don't think it's important it's realized enough and like it says like there's another one of those little puzzle pieces that connects the games, the the overall lore to each other, I mean, helps explain the leaps in terms of when you go from 3 to 4 to 5, all the changes that Cortana goes through. A lot of them could probably be traced back to here, you're th- into the influence of the Gravemind. And her kind of pretty much, you'd imagine one of her most traumatic experiences she's had up to that point. It's a really good book, really well written, Um, it's awesome. Go read it. Yeah, I do hope Karen Travis gets to do something else in the Halo universe, like, even if it's not the Kilo 5 stuff. I think, like, she does great work with characters and building them like she does an awful lot in this to develop the grave mind as a personality because the grave mind that you get in halo 2 and 3 in the games it doesn't touch too much on who he is as a personality and like up until we got the uh forerunner books like this was probably the most exposure you got to the grave mind and how he works sort of like operates as a an entity i don't think he's in any other or any of the other halo media i think it's just the games and those two series, just Evolutions and uh, Forerunner. Yeah, we, we. I don't think we ever really get much of a touch. No, well, not him as a him as an entity. Like we get the flood in other places, but it's just not. Uh, it's not about the thought process behind it very often, which I appreciate. Like this was the first real in depth dive into who who he is. Like you, you learn a lot about the Grave Mind as an entity, like why he talks in riddles. And like Cortana even hypothesizes that he's absorbed so many species and so much language that it's just like second nature to him at this point to play with it. And how he, yeah. uh, and I think he even drops a line like he comes up with his like riddles and poetry on the fly, whereas a, a human would spend weeks deliberating over the words and the choice and the writing style and everything else. I think he's not even actively thinking about it. It's just happening. Yeah, it's just it's just second nature in the same way that we would chat. He just riddles his way through everything. Well, and also he has like he has all these like like Cortana described him as like all these different voices. Like he would say something and she would think, oh, that was maybe a poet from long, long ago from a species long forgotten or something like that. Yeah, the same thing. She like when he interrogates her, she's fairly certain that he has a specific tone of voice. And she wonders, like, is, is this an interrogator or a jailer or someone? 
that he absorbed once upon a time. Could be. Could be he takes on a persona of something or someone of useful skills. Yeah. How to interrogate someone. I think like that. That's really the main things from it. Like it's worth going over. It's not particularly long, so it's about fifty pages. It's not Yeah, that's it. Like it, it shouldn't take you too long to get through it, but it's definitely worth going through and seeing Absolutely. what details you pick out of it there is a lot there there are a lot of different layers and every time i read it i kind of pick out something different especially as the games have progressed and the story has progressed it's it's written in like these layers it's amazing it's really good go read it guys podcast evolved thumbs up <laughs> Woo! It. seal of approval okay so i think that'll about do us for this week um make sure to follow us in all the usual places twitter instagram facebook jump over to the facebook group have a look around also keep an eye out we will be announcing the next book club shortly now that we're recording these ahead of schedule we have a rough idea of what's going up when so keep an eye out for that and until next time evolved evolved